All right, we're gonna do a handling video. Now we already did one. Uh, link below, maybe more than that. Uh, I did a real nice one of like of a Deep Woods Ventures. Uh, so I'm gonna do another one, real basic one, because I wanted to do a chip carving video. And um, anyway, the point is, uh, if you want to make your own knife, this is a great way to start. It's cheap, doesn't take a whole lot of tools, and uh, and and you get a good usable product. Um, so in wood carving specifically, and I guess if you're doing woodworking and you need like a bench knife or something, something small um, and bigger, there's, there's like Mora knives and stuff uh, that can be also, the tangs are like this. It's a hidden tang. You basically drill a hole, put it in there, and put some epoxy in there, and then shape your handle and smooth it, and you get a quality knife. It's pretty much how a lot of the professional ones are made, or the uh, large companies make them. It'll, it'll drift, okay? Your, your drill will drift and it'll go off. So I usually don't even like try to... If you don't have the full vise and bench press, like I just, I just do it by hand and I feel for it. And you can do a thing where you let it spin like a lathe. You know, and if it's going all wonky, you're doing something wrong. gonna heat up in there real good kind of just keep checking your work so we made this a little bit too small but we need to get in to the hilt which is about that long let's take a look at that that's pretty much all the way in all right let's take a look at that so again right it's not too bad it's a little off and you can do a little bit of side to side action with these um, one of my other methods is using a much smaller drill and trying to do like a, the cleanest way is if, whoa, are y'all still recording? Um, I said, are y'all still recording? As if I'm not buying it. And so when that's going in, are y'all so, you know, like, you're going to line it up. I don't know if y'all can see it all after this mess. But line this Okay, so here we have a block of wood with a hole in it that the tang fits into. Now we're going to shape it. Eventually we'll epoxy that tang in there. This is a really simple project and very rewarding. I would suggest you guys take a shot at it. So this wood is, um, I forget what it's called. Um, I think it's snake wood. This is one project where you can use kind of fun looking wood that, uh, you know, that the people that use lathes use, which is pin turners and that, and it, specifically pin blanks, um, is what you can look at. So it's the general size. I think that's what this one is. Um, but they'll also sell them online as, uh, knife blanks. Just make sure that they're not scales because they'll sell scales and they'll be way too thin. So you can see I'm keeping this sawdust here. Because uh, I'll use that to fill up. Yeah, that's better. I'll use that to fill up this hole with the epoxy. Anyway, as you can see here, uh, I'm skipping over a lot of this boring footage. This knife, this wood is carvable. You want to check online to see if whatever wood you're looking into can actually, a knife can go through it if you're doing that. You can, you know, use a rasp or some sort of power sanding tool if you'd like. Whatever you want to do to get this into the shape that you want to. Um, you know, maple is a great wood, purple heart. Um, but they're pretty hard. They're, they're pretty difficult um, as far as carving them by hand after they've already cured and dried. But hopefully you don't have a whole lot of, you know, wood to remove or, or 
shaping to do. It's very picky. So as far as the shape, I'm going with a pretty small and thinnish shape. All right, let's talk about epoxy. We have this. Most of these epoxies are okay. I don't know why, but sometimes you're at the store, there's like a bunch of different kinds. And they say different amount of times they set up and all this other stuff. You do want the, the less amount of time. You do want to definitely want a, a two-part epoxy though. Don't use a super glue or something that just says epoxy on it. Um, what is this? I maybe need to read the instructions on here. Okay, hold on. So this is interesting. I guess what happens is this nozzle mixes it up and then you just squirt it out. So usually you get two of these and you squirt it into a um, you know a little container and you'll mix it up. And that's at that point is when you put it through, you mix in some sawdust. Now this is this will work perfect for yeah, it even fits inside there. I wish I had this in the past. I, I think this is heavy enough. Um, you may want to protect some of it. Okay, like go around. Um, it, I mean, it comes off, right? But it can be annoying sometimes. And you can manage to get this taped to something. Okay. Because, right, we don't want the, the epoxy don't move that much. I think this one sets up pretty quickly, but, yeah. We're not going to take any chances. We're going to dump it on in there. Because we'll tape it. Oh, and we're going to do that now, actually. Now, once you put it in there, if you have, like, a bunch of space, after you get that epoxy in there, then tape it again to make sure that it's, like, standing upright. Um, okay, so if the tang is not, you want it to be rough, all right? So you get some, you get a file or some sandpaper, and you roughen that up. If you were making these your own, then you take the angle grinder before you heat treat it, hopefully, and make some little divots like this, right? I have a knife making video. Uh, you guys can check that out. So you just want something for the epoxy to grab onto. Um, I think it's flex cut that doesn't, and they don't put a lot of tang in there. And I've had some things come out, and I've I have complained heavily to them. I got in a fight with some of their reps. So that's the end of that story. I don't remember what I was supposed to do with this. Let's just wing it. How about that? You have to wing it. Ding 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 ding. Did that take enough off? Okay. Oh, that's crazy. It's like all oh, coming up through there. What? Okay. So we are going to do this. Mm, it smells good. And I'm still gonna do my, it doesn't have to be mixed in, it needs to be like on there. Y'all, this epoxy is like straight up, it's real serious, okay? Okay. And speaking of being real serious, we don't want that to drip all the way down the side where we can't get to it. Um, but now we're gonna put some more sawdust on the top. If you leave it for a little bit, like it'll it'll chill in, in there, go in there. I'm gonna use the back side of this. Which way is this pointing? <laughs> I was like, don't forget, and then I did. Okay, I'm gonna use the back side of that to mix it around a little bit. Oh, this is gonna be amazing. And yeah, I can see it's already going in there. And depending on the wood, it's maybe gonna be going like into the wood a little bit. But then this happens. So if you don't have that applicator or it's not fitting, you have to spend some time letting it go in there. 
Have you guys been able to see what I've been doing this whole time? Not really, the lighting's horrible. I'm sorry. Be guided by my voice. Um, this is very slow setup, even the fast stuff. So it's not like it's going to stay on your hands until your fingers fall off like super glue. It's not as dangerous. We are back. Look at this beautiful workspace. What nice visuals we have here. Okay, so let's take a look at our handiwork. Oh, it should be all right. So this is what we're this is what we're dealing with here. And it looks like it's straight enough. I don't know. I feel like afterwards I was like, man, I really winged that. I haven't made one in years and I have no reason to be so confident of my I don't know. I'm not good at drawing straight lines. I'm not good at measurements. Just real carefully get some of that little top crud off. Do do. Yeah, and it all kind of wants to come up with that tape. All right, and we will do that. Guys, don't use your knives, your nice knives with tape. It will make them crappy very quickly. It'll fill it up and then that tape and gunky stuff will get in your sharpening equipment and then that'll be gunked up. None of it's good. It's why they made box cutters. It's actually not to hijack airplanes. It's actually so you can have a replaceable blade that you can just throw away after it gets filled with tape. All right, so let's give it a quick test. And I'm liking the way the handle feels. It's um, you want almost like a a very versatile handle for the chip carving. So I'm gonna do a video of that next, and because basically doing upside down pyramids, that's what it basically looks like. And I'm real happy with this. This is that Beavercraft blade chip carving knife hope you guys enjoyed please do this project it's a lot of fun take care